Welcome back to Bridges. We are being joined this morning by Michael Marsh, the brand new president and CEO of the Toledo Fair Housing Center, and Keith Foster, the director of enforcement and compliance for that same organization. Both guys want you to know that housing discrimination is alive and well, but they are here to help you through the pitfalls that um, the opportunities of discrimination provide folks when they're out looking around. They, you mentioned something about veterans, I heard as we were going it, into. Ohio is one of maybe five or six states now that recognize military status as a protected class under the Fair Housing Law in Ohio. Wow, that's fabulous. It is not a protected class federally. We'd like to see that. We'd like to see LGBT right. and source of income where people that have subsidized housing you know, you can't hold them to the same standard of, you know, the amount of income they should have to qualify to, to be, to rental. Uh, but veterans, uh, you know, we're really responding to, you know, there are a lot of veterans returning and they're not always in the best of condition. There's been a lot of injuries. Uh, we've been very successful at keeping more people alive, but in a state where they need, where they're disabled. Are you yeah. guys doing anything to, anything special to let veterans know that you're doing that? I have to tell you that the way we manage our veterans in this country is just a, a, a topic that I'm absolutely passionate about and very dear to my heart. I don't think we do nearly enough. I don't think we say thank you nearly loudly enough mm -hmm. to these men and women. Are, are you all doing anything special that says, you know, we're here to help? Yeah, part of our new programs is specifically for outreach and, and some of it cool. is specifically for veterans and the combination of veterans and disabled veterans now right. um, and how they're being treated like you say is a, is a travesty and but some people just aren't aware of their rights I mean That's our, right. our cases when we talk about race there are a lot of race cases but nationally um, disability cases outnumber race cases and we're with us it's it's very close second and, and I was and I, I think we need to say out loud here that you while you all handle cases based on race you really are managing protected class cases all Absolutely. protected classes yeah all protected race, classes color sex religion national origin yeah. familial status which means families with children and disability as Keith was saying and, and disability is now the number one source of complaints in the state of Ohio and throughout the country Right. That's true. And there's so much. There's great information on their website about disability. You have a frequently asked questions um, for section on there for reasonable accommodation. Reasonable modifications. And, One of the right. tools we developed was a brochure that a person with a disability can tear off one of the leaflets and fill out the one side to request a reasonable accommodation from their housing provider, for instance, if they require a service animal. And then on the flip side, it has uh, an authorization from their medical professional. So mm -hmm. they can take that form to their uh, housing provider and that should be sufficient to grant them a reasonable accommodation request such as a service animal or a parking space that's closer to their unit. Yeah, a lot of people are, a lot of people know about service animals, but there are lots of accommodations that someone might need. We've recently had someone that had a, a fire alarm converted to a visual alert, a flashing light as opposed to a sound audio, because they right. were deaf. It might be moving a switch lower. It might be, you know, there are all kinds of things that might be done as in reasonable modifications or reasonable accommodations. And a lot of it, lack of awareness. And we have a lot of people that are new landlords that aren't used to the rules and aren't, you know, aren't familiar with the Fair Housing Act and they can think mostly, most people are aware that you can't discriminate against people based on race, but not many people are aware of the intricacies of disability and access and an accommodation and a modification that might be required to enjoy the tenancy. Yeah, you know, can we go back for just a second? We only have a few seconds left, um, actually a few minutes left in the segment, but you had mentioned earlier, um, you, you actually said we are very close to becoming a Detroit in, in terms of the quality of our neighborhoods. Is, is that what you guys mean to say? Do you really feel like the city is moving in that direction? We're trying to stop it from moving in that direction. But I'm your sorry, fear is that meant. it is going in that direction. Well, if we don't start plugging the holes there's and stopping potential. the gaps, then there's a potential for that. And, and with the foreclosure issue, how that, how that impacts the neighborhoods, it, it can be devastating. But there are new initiatives out there um, and we have gone from one program to another to another that were kind of short-lived. The, mm -hmm. the Save the Dream initiative, Restoring Stability in Ohio, part of the Hardest Hit Fund, has been a, a big help to a lot of people. People can get um, um, up to, at currently up to $25,000 for assistance, and it, it, we think that's going to go up in February. The program's going to change, have and some new changes in February. What kind of assistance is that, Keith? Uh, we can help people get caught up. We can help people in some Caught cases. Caught up it with rent payments, yeah, mortgage, mortgage, pay mortgage payments, mortgage this payments, is, this mortgage is for mortgage payments. holders. Um, <coughs> what's called rescue payment, just get them caught up. 
Um, in some cases, we can help make people make payments for right now up to 13 months. Um, it can help them, it can apply some of that money if the lender agrees and it works out uh, just to reduce the principal so that it makes the payment more affordable. Um, and we can do, if all else fails, there's some transition assistance to help people move you know, from their home to an apartment or something else. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's multifaceted. It does require, there are some requirements. I would refer people to savethedream.ohio.gov for the details on that. And also, you know, uh, look at it next month <laughs> when we think that things are going to change. And it's been a pretty clunky kind of process and we're, the whole changes in February are designed to streamline the process. And as I had mentioned earlier, Donnie, we're looking into the fair housing side of foreclosures. And Shauna Smith from the National Fair Housing Alliance again and I will be here next week to talk about our joining the national organization in the REO investigations again because when a bank sells a house for pennies on the dollar, it affects the value of all the homes in the neighborhood. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things that I've noticed too is, is and I really encourage black clubs, there's some really active black clubs and black watch organizations around the city and I really encourage you to pay attention to the amount of foreclosure that's going on in your neighborhood once those houses become empty and they're vandalized and they're boarded exactly. you, you've just got it's such devastating a mess. effect devastating on the that's kind of what I was talking about and how we want to curtail that right. and I would say to the to the members of the black watch groups call us we're, we're always available to come out and talk with you we're we're not just the fair housing police we're a community resource I like that. And it's that. better to talk to us and involve us in the process of, of making your, your neighborhood a better place and a desirable neighborhood, neighborhood of choice. Involve us in that planning process. Mm -hmm. And the city of Toledo involves us in their planning process. And HUD is going to issue new regulations on fair housing planning for municipalities that receive community development block grant funds, which is virtually all the municipalities. So we'll be working very closely with the Department of Neighborhoods, with Wood County and other municipalities to make sure that they are doing the fair housing planning that they're mandated to do by HUD when they sign on the dotted line that they obtain that funding. Mm -hmm. They have, upon receiving <coughs> that money, they're uh, obligated to affirmatively further fair housing. Exactly. And so we, we, uh, I know we're looking in a small community <laughs> Um, at some zoning changes that they're making and how does that apply and is it affecting people that maybe people that have children and so you know that's part of what we do with the initiatives that we've began recently we've been doing a, a lot more of that we're stuff. also we've studying condominium bylaw documents and HOA documents a lot of we're finding HOA. Out, mm -hmm, homeowners association and condominiums in particular we're finding that when the Fair Housing Act was amended in 1988 to add familial status families with children that those bylaws, those condo associations haven't gone in and changed. So they may say no children under 18 allowed to live here. Mm -hmm. And that's a violation. Which of is a violation. It, tell, tell people again what the protected classes are. Uh, sex, religion, race, <laughs> color, national origin, familial status, family with children as I mentioned, and disability, which is the highest source of complaints right now in the state and the country. Right, and the reason the I... The state also has added military status. Correct. And, Mili that's right. In some cities, uh, Toledo and Bowling Green notably, have added LGBT protections. Oh, in, really? In employment yes. and housing. I didn't... Yes. Know. Really? Yes. Yeah, the human okay. rights ordinance when Louis Escobar was president of city council. Oh, that's right, he yes. Was, he's now right. on our board. Yes. And he helped pass that pass legislation. That. <coughs> and so True. that is protected here. And we do get cases uh, based on sexual orientation. Yeah, and the reason that I asked you guys to repeat that is that I really want you to leave this morning understanding that the Fair Housing Center addresses a wide array of issues, not just racial discrimination, but a wide ar ar array of issues. If, if I'm sitting at home and I think that I've encountered something that was inappropriate in my search for housing, you know, and I'm a little concerned about getting involved with you guys. I don't want a big hoopla. I don't want my name in the paper. I don't want to, you know, I think it's going to be a big trial. Do no, I need to be worried about that? Our services are free and confidential. Th say that again. Our services are free, free and, and confidential. confidential. And I want to make sure that your listeners hear that we are not a government agency. We're a private, nonprofit organization. You can send an email if you're too hesitant to even call at first. Call and talk to somebody. We're here to help. We are a community resource, not just the Fair Housing Police. Great. And many of our people come to our door and ask us, you know, this just seemed weird to me and we test it and we found out it's not discriminatory. And the, the vast bulk of our cases, even the ones that we successfully resolve, don't involve lawsuits or even complaints. You know, we sometimes we work with landlords. Some landlords, you know, will make a request for reasonable accommodation and they didn't know they had an obligation or they didn't know this person sure. wanted this. 
if you talk to a landlord, you know, we get a lot of resolutions way south of litigation or, or that kind of stuff. That's and we would never go forward with somebody with their case and their details. Um, you know, some people want to, some people want to participate. They might want to come to our annual meeting and kind of talk to, to our board members and, and, and people about what it is we've done to help them. And we encourage that, but we, we certainly- We actually have one client who is just gangbusters to try to help us do outreach. She goes with our outreach specialist and talks to different groups about how she was discriminated against and bullied and harassed because she has a disability. She, mm -hmm. she was born with a hearing um, impairment and this apartment manager harassed her and called her all sorts of horrible names and mistreated her. And, and her this, and her guests and forbade her from having guests and having her prescriptions delivered to her apartment. Oh my gosh. Just, just awful things And you, things don't, you don't have to live like that. I mean, you, you, you don't, don't I mean, have to live you like know, that. You know, let us open a case. You can, if we open a case and you want us to stop it, we'll stop it. We don't do anything that's not in your best interest and your, whatever your interests are. You know, we're, we're a friendly <laughs> resource and we're right. more than one. You know, some people, you know, well, this just doesn't sound right, like you said. And well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And right. And, and, there's some real, and there's some real comfort in knowing that it didn't happen. There's some real comfort mm -hmm. in knowing that it yes, didn't it happen. Is. You've got about 30 seconds. What would you like to leave people with? Somebody said to me once that I like you guys because you really are the fair housing center. You don't take a side. You really investigate it fairly and thoroughly to determine if there is probable cause or not, like Keith said. And it's not always the case that there is discrimination. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. And even sometimes when there's not, <clears throat> excuse me, we do, we are advocates. We advocate for that person and we see what can be resolved. And often sometimes it's not, we see there's not discrimination, but yet we'll still talk to a landlord and this is an issue and they'll work it out. Great, great. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Stay with me for just a second, won't you? We have to go away, but I promise we will be right back.